say the game is getting old. Monday morning and your coffee's cold. Life is not what you want it to be. Hello everyone and welcome to a new direction. My name is Jay Izzo and wow, wow, wow. You know what happens when you have a great book mixed with an incredible guest? You know what that makes? It makes a great show. That's what I have today. I have a great show. Why? Because I have a great book. The book is called The Power of Agency, The Seven Principles to Conquer Obstacles, Make Effective Decisions, and Create a Life on Your Own Terms. And it, and it's, it's a great book, but I got a better guest, right? I got one of the co-authors of this great book. His name is Paul Knapper, Dr. Paul Knapper, Dr. Paul. You know what? He is awesome. He is fun. He is... It, anyway, the book is so incredibly... It, it, I, when I wrote the review of this book, I wrote the review saying this is like one of the most comprehensive guides that you will ever have to helping you make the most effective decisions that you can ever make in your life. I'm just telling you, it is absolutely true. We're going to talk to him. He's going to be outstanding. He's going to be a lot of fun, and he's going to be great, and he's going to help you so much. I promise he's that good. All right? But let's do what we do every week, right? You know what I'd say? You know what? We're four-part people, right? We're physical people, we're mental people, we're emotional people, and we're spiritual people. By the way, he kind of hits on that in his book, by the way. I just want to let you know. It's kind of what, you know, psychological people do. You know, we kind of we kind of are on the same page pretty much. <laughs> well, we think we are. Anyway, that's what we do. But anyway, because we're four-part people, I want to check with you every week like we do every week, right? So on a scale of one to ten, one being miserable, ten being outstanding, everybody out there who is now joining us live, and thank you, uh, those on Facebook Live and CastBox FM. FM Live and those who are listening by podcast and iHeartRadio and those people who are listening to um, the FM station uh, that we're on every Thursday and Sunday, Oak 93.5, we thank them as well. So, scale of 1 to 10, 1 being miserable, 10 being outstanding. How are you guys doing out there physically today? Right? And what am I what I mean physically? Well, what I mean is how are you feeling? I mean, you know, are you taking care of yourself? How does your body feel? Right? Are you you're gonna hear him talk about moving. We need to move, right? That's one of the principles, right? But how are you physically doing, right? Are you are you doing the things that you need to do to take care of your body? Are you eating right? Are you exercising? Are you are you you know, some of us sit around. You hear Doctor Paul talk about us sitting around a lot. You know, we need to get up. We need to move. Are you doing things so that you're not saying so sedentary? So on a scale of one to ten. How are you doing with all that, right? Two questions. Why are you that way? And then what can you do to change it so you can get to whatever number you're at? So, you know, if you're a four, you know, I'm not expecting you to get to a 10, but, I, you know, what can you do to get to a five, right? And if you're a seven, well, that's higher up there. Maybe what can you do to get to a 7.5, right? So you're in control of that, right? So what can you do to change what you're doing right now to get the net, next number? All right, so you have your first number. That's your physical number. Now let's talk about the mental number. And what do I mean by the mental number? Same scale. One's miserable. Ten's outstanding. What I mean by the mental number is what are you consuming, right? What, what are you? We have two halves of the brain, right? We've got a creative side, you know, the right side. And we've got the left side, which is more of the logical side. And, you know, what are you doing to consume information and knowledge, you know, on your own that you're actually really consuming? I, and the reason I say this is because I'm not talking about TV. Because so often, you know what, TV just throws stuff at us and it's not, we're not really consuming it, right? We just, we're, I'm talking about actively participating in growing your knowledge. What are you doing, right? What are you reading? You know, what do you, what podcasts are you listening to? This is a great podcast to listen to because we do, you know, really both sides of the brain, right? But there's a lot of great podcasts out there or maybe an audio book or maybe reading a book or maybe taking up an instrument or maybe taking up a foreign language, something that's engaging you that you're learning and you're actively growing. Because, you know, let's be honest, when it comes to the mental part of our lives, we can continually grow. It doesn't matter. Right? You can always continually grow. So on that scale of 1 to 10, where are you at mentally? All right? So you got two numbers. you got a physical number, mental number. All right? And by the way, same two questions. You know, why are you that way? And then what can you do to change yourself mentally? What can you do right now to change that? So the third area of your life, right? The emotional. And I'm, I'm not going to go into emotional quotients and emotional intelligence and all the things that that brings in because, I mean, that, that could take be a whole show on itself. But, so I'm just going to make it really, really, really simple. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being miserable, 10 being outstanding, how are these two areas of your life? First of all, how well are you able to control your emotions? I mean, that, and I mean, like, like in any situation, you know, where you start to feel emotionally floated, how well are you able to control those intentionally? That's the first part. And then the second part is, how well are you able to tune in 
to the emotions of others. And I'm not talking about sympathy as much as I'm talking about empathy, right? Being able to put yourself in another person's shoes and understanding their emotions, right? Those are the those are the two areas I really want to focus on. So if you were to evaluate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, how well you're able to really control your emotions, right? Especially under stress. And then and then you know how well are you able to tune into the emotions of others and understand them? How well are you doing with that? You know, and, and Dr. Paul's going to talk about, you know, one of the things that we know about emotions is, you know, the, the better we are to label our emotions, right, the better we are to really kind of understand them and control them, ultimately. And sometimes we don't have a very good vocabulary when it comes to emotions. So maybe one of the things you can do if you're not doing very well emotionally is maybe, in, in, you know, increase your vocabulary of emotions, right? Because it, it doesn't just come down to I'm mad or I'm sad, right, or I'm happy, right? It doesn't... It's not that simple. We, there's just so many different variations of each of those. So maybe just getting a bigger vocabulary can help you along the way. All right, so you have three numbers. You have a physical number, a mental number, an emotional number. And then comes the spiritual part, right? And a lot of people go, ah, Jay, I don't know about this whole spiritual thing. This thing, that kind of creeps me out or weirds me out, whatever. Okay, listen. I'm a, listen, I came up in, as a science guy when I was in grad school and, and doing my thing in psychology as a, you know, and... And I get it, but the truth of the matter is I know one thing is absolutely true, is that, you know what, if you removed the physical, the mental, and the emotional, there's stuff left over, and there's stuff that we will never be able to explain in this world. I'm sorry, it's just science is never going to be able to explain it. And, you know, there are certain things that we can't explain in, in ourselves that touch us, and sometimes you hear people say, you know, it touches our soul, maybe it's a piece of music, you know, and something that brings us back to center or, you know, brings us to a sense of peace, whether that be meditation or maybe that's nature or, or maybe that's God or whatever it may be for you, right? What is that thing that brings you back to that sense of center, gives you a sense of peace, something that, that really touches your soul that, you know, that brings you to that, right? And so scale of one to 10, how is that going in that area, right? And, and maybe you haven't been in touch with it for such a long time, right? And maybe it's time you should. But how is it, what, what's it going for you? And, and why is it that way? And what do you need to change? And, you know, look, if it's God, great. How's that relationship going? If it's nature, how's that going for you? You know, if it's meditation, how's that going for you? You know, maybe it's, maybe it's a musical thing. But you have four now, you have four numbers. You have a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual number. And you need to think of those as each number as a leg of a chair, right? And it's four legs of a chair. And if the chair is uneven, right, it's hard to sit in that chair and, and it makes you unbalanced and it's never comfortable and it's hard on your posture. By the same token, if they're too low, right, well, it's also difficult to sit in that chair and that can make things uncomfortable and that can hurt your posture as well. And you know what? My next guest is is so familiar with everything that I just said and I'm so grateful and glad to have him on the show. His name is Dr. Paul Knapper. He provides consultation and coaching to business leaders and helps them sharpen and strengthen their leadership efforts. His professional background includes extensive experience in assessment and applying uh, psychological principles to improve the performance of individuals and organizations. He is, uh, his client list, well, it's huge. It's like Fortune 500 companies, major universities, startups, nonprofits. He started in Wall Street with J.P. Morgan. He was a securities analyst, and he was responsible for following several major industries, including banking, insurance, and media. He then launched a management psychological practice, uh, performance psychology consulting with two partners in 1998, where he advises a broad array of organizations and industry. He is an outstanding, uh, he's an outstanding psychologist. He is an amazing co-author along with Dr. Anthony Rayo. He is the author of this book, The Power of Agency. Please welcome to the show, everyone, and please welcome to A New Direction, Dr. Paul Knapper. Welcome to A New Direction, Doctor. Thanks so much for having me, Jay. Really excited to be here. Yes, yeah, so the book, The Power of Agency, uh, I, I read this thing, I was telling Anthony, uh, Dr. Anthony Rayo, I was telling him I, when I was connected with him on LinkedIn, I said, you know, I've read this thing from Sten to Sturm, and I was like, oh my gosh, this thing is a powerhouse. So I know we are not going to make it through this entire book, but I want to work through some parts that I think will, and hopefully will be helpful, and if you have want to steer me in a direction, I'm certainly welcome to do that. I want to start by something that you said that you both said in the preface, and I think that this is really kind of sets off the whole entire book. It says, you are under no obligation to read this book. Two, should you decide to read on, you are under no obligation to finish. Three, should you finish, you are under no obligation to adopt all seven principles we recommend. When I read that from the first page, I was like, going, okay, I got it. 
I, okay, I got it. You want me to take control of how I'm going to do this. And that led me to the question, you know, that I know people are going to ask and they're already asking it is, okay, agency, I get seven principles to conquer obstacles, make effective decisions and create a life on their own terms. But agency, how can you break down, Dr. Paul, how do you break down agency for people when it's their first time they really have heard this term? Well, it's a, it's, it's a great question. It's, it's, it's probably the all important question to, to start with. And, you know, I'll, I'll relate it to what you were just talking about, Jay, which is this whole idea of people needing something to support them in their lives, right? You, you refer to it as a, as a chair with four legs. It involves the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. Um, and for, for, for any of us to be good at creating a, a meaningful life for ourselves, we need to have certain conditions be, be, be in place, certain conditions be true. And our physical health, our mental health, our emotional and spiritual health need to be in balance. And when they are, it gives us a healthy and, and positive sense of, of personal agency in our lives. And, and agency is, a, is, a, is, is something that's been discussed and researched um, for decades among uh, psychologists and sociologists and philosophers. Um, it's, a, it's a big concept. It's basically, it basically centers around the capacity for humans to engage in independent thought and independent action to uh, take their lives in a direction that's uniquely suited to them. And we wrote this book because, and it, it is, you know, agency is one of those things where people, one of the reasons why people seek out, you know, psychotherapy, for example, I mean, to, to, to boost their level of, of agency. Um, but we wrote this book because our clients were telling us more and more that they were feeling stuck, they were feeling overwhelmed, they were uh, felt feeling like they were going through the motions uh, much of the the time in their lives, and they didn't know what was wrong. They, they didn't, and they didn't know they didn't know how to find their way out of that that state. And we realized it was a it was essentially a crisis in in agency that they were feeling. They they felt powerless. They they felt um, they didn't have the the wherewithal to kind of take their lives in a direction that was most meaningful to them. So that's really kind of why we we wrote this book, why we centered it on the concept of agency. And again, to most people, agency is an unfamiliar term. You know, if you're in education or psychology, you're you're more apt to be familiar with the, the term. Um, but for for most people, it's kind of a new thing. And you know, the other thing I'll just say briefly is. What we like to say to people to simplify it is, you know, we all know what a sports agent is or a literary agent. Um, that's a person who who acts on your behalf, right? To to help you, you know, to to get a job, to get a contract, to, you know, they're 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 your agent. They're, they 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 work to, um, to 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 create a positive thing in your life. So by the same token. You know, we all as individuals have agency within ourselves, and it's our capacity to act as that agent uh, for ourselves. And a lot of times, people aren't aware of that. They don't. They don't know how to. They don't know how to access it or develop it. And certainly, when life, you know, when when someone experiences a setback in life, um, you know, where people are knocked back on their their heels, they they, they you know they they, they 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 start thinking about you know what do, what do I do? How do I you know what helps me to get past this situation? And it really is agency that it's our personal agency that helps us to um, surmount challenges, to recover from setbacks. And um, so we wanted to write a book specifically that helps people to have a greater level of agency in their lives. Mm, that's awesome. So, I, I and, and, and it is awesome for this reason, and you give some great statistics here, right, in the introduction. You said, according to the World Health Organization, the U.S., the United States is the most anxious country in the world. 40 million Americans are diagnosed with anxiety disorder. We have a buildup of cortisol, which is the stress hormone and contributes to weight gain, by the way. We see an increase in the youth suicide movement here. Uh, there is a constant buzz and worry and anxiety that we're, we're not doing everything that we're supposed to be doing. We need to be doing more. There's a negative feedback loop that exists. There's more anxiety, distractions, hurting relationships, being more depression. Uh, we're, and we're increasingly finding 
diff, you know, decisions to be diff, more difficult to make. And part of this, as you point out, is that the technology is always on and there's all sorts of, you know, competitiveness of metrics, loss of human connectedness, less physical movement, blah, blah, blah. I, mean, I can go on and on. Where does it stop or can we stop it? Or how does, how do we, how do we start dealing with all of this? Uh, it's, it's really an important question, and um, you know what what's surprising to a lot of people, you know, when when they when they read the book, is what you just discussed, which is that there literally is a silent epidemic of anxiety occurring in in the United States uh, right now, and so with 20% of of Americans diagnosed with a, a clinical anxiety disorder, and you know, obviously, milli- many millions more who um, are are undiagnosed um, or who are just below the the clinical symptom line. Uh, so we have an anxiety problem in in the U.S. And the question is, what's driving that? What, why? Why now? And we have robust data. Um, that we dug into because, you know, as, as you know, Jay, our, our book leans heavily on science and data. Uh, we have data starting from the 1930s on anxiety in the United States. And what you see is the steady march upward from the 1930s. It got to the point that uh, in the late 1980s, um, children in the United States were carrying around baseline levels of anxiety in their lives that was the equivalent to what psychiatric patients, child psychiatric patients, presented with in the 1950s. So, you know, we, we're all kind of living, we're all kind of experiencing this proverbial boiling pot of water. And, you know, it's, it's when we experience uh, overwhelm, which is the, 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 we suddenly notice how hot the water is and, we, and, we're, and we're extremely uncomfortable that, we, you know, we, we really take notice of it. But anxiety has been steadily building. And what we also talk about in the book is anxiety is contagious. It spreads from person to person. And that's partly because, you know, we as humans are social creatures, um, but we literally are making each other um, more anxious. And so one of the first orders of business to get to your question is, you know, understanding this, understanding what we're up against, understanding what the environmental uh, conditions are that we're all living in, you know, and you know, the world has changed. Our, our culture has changed dramatically over the last 30 years. It's changed dramatically even over the last 10 years. And one of the key things that's changed is just literally the amount of information we're exposed to. And that's one, one thing. And um, so what's important to understand is, you know, what we as humans need in our lives in order to feel in control, to feel healthy, um, to feel fulfilled. And, um, you know, what I like, what we like to say, you know, uh, Tony, my co-author and I is, you know, we're kind of living through one grand social experiment right now and we've put the tech industry in charge of it and we're just now starting to see the effects of of that and you know there's a in short there's a lot of overstimulation we many people find themselves in a very overstimulated state as in they're exposed to too much um, stimuli to get to the point where you know, it actually creates anxiety. It 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 it, it, it interferes with their 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 sense of balance and it interferes with their decision making. So, you know, and people again, sort of like that frog in the proverbial pot of boiling water, you know you know, people aren't aware, they're not aware of it because everybody's doing it, right? So, you, you know, we as social creatures, we look to the right, we look to the left, we see what everybody else is doing, we assume, hey, it must be, this must be what we do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what we're doing is in some ways making us sick. It's making us anxious. It's making us feel like we're losing control. And, you know, part, so part of the equation is, is just the the volume of digital stimulation. I mean, there's other things driving this, but essentially we're being challenged as humans to adapt to a, a new set of of conditions, and 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 many people are really struggling to adapt to this. And so we wrote the book because we wanted to say, hey, there are things you can actually do for yourself that will help you 
to better adapt to some of these uh, environmental demands that, you know, keep changing. And um, part of it is as simple as, you know, being more aware of how much stimulation you expose your brain to. Because if your brain is in an overstimulated state, it affects the physical, you know, it affects the emotional, mm. and it will, of course, affect the spiritual, to use your, your model. Um, and, and for a lot of people, that's, you know, that's, an, that's a, a relatively new idea. People aren't, people aren't, aren't, aren't aware of that. So, so anyway, so that, that, the, the place to start is to do an assessment of where do I find myself? How do, how do, do, I, do I experience overwhelm on a regular basis? Do I feel like I, I, I'm on a good trajectory in creating the life I want to create for myself? Um, am I feeling fulfilled more of the time? Am I, you know, do I feel like I'm connected in a healthy way? to other human beings in my life, to friends, to family, to my community. Um, you know, we, 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 we ask people to, to sort of do similar to what you do, Jay, is, is do, a, do, a, do a bit of an assessment. Where, where, do you, where do you find yourself right now? And so that's, that's the place to start. Awesome. His name is Dr. Uh, Paul Knapper, and the book is entitled The Power of Agency, The Seven Principles to Conquer Obstacles, Make Effective Decisions, and Create a Life on Your Own Terms. And he's joining us here. By the way, the book is, uh, the book is available on Amazon, bookstores everywhere. It's available in Audible books. It's available Kindle books. It's uh, paperback, hardback. It's also even available on audio CD, believe it or not. And I think this may be the first author I've ever had to audio CDs. So you can get it there. And he's joining us here on A New Direction. Hey folks, A New Direction has a brand new sponsor. It is Epic Physical Therapy. And whether you're recovering from an injury or surgery or suffering everyday aches and pains or having difficulty performing activities of daily living, or maybe you're a professional athlete and you're just not able to perform at your level, maybe you're just looking to improve how you feel and move. Look, the elite team at Epic Physical Therapy will provide you with a customized tailored treatment plan that will fit your individual needs. With their experience in rehabbing uh, young athletes to elite professionals, they understand the need to treat the entire body as a functional whole, not just your symptoms or your injury. Epic relief, epic recovery, epic results. You can learn more by going to www.epicpt.com. That's E-P-I-C. PT.com and Linda Craft and Team Realtors, no matter where you're at in the world, Linda Craft and her expert team can help you find the right professional to either sell your home or buy your home. They've been in business for 35 years, and you know what they are known as? They are known as the legends of customer service. It's not a slogan. It's been part of their culture for 35 years. You can find out why they are the legends of customer service when it comes to real estate. Why not check them out? Go on over to lindacraft.com. That's L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T. Dot com, and we thank them for bringing uh, New Direction and Dr. Knapper with us. And we're back here with Dr. Paul Knapper and the book, The Power of Agency. And uh, we're talking with him. And he just talked about an assessment, by the way, that uh, you need to start doing. Uh, and, and you go, well, Jay, I, where am I going to get that assessment? Well, let me tell you. If you buy the book, <laughs> as it so happens to be, if you get the book, you know what? They have an assessment in the book that you could take an assessment. I did the assessment and I really, you know, I was like, okay, you know, I'm pretty, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. And they go through the seven areas, by the way, and I'll just <clears throat> tell you what the seven areas are uh, because we're not going to get through all of them, I, I can promise you. Uh, but it's control stimuli, you know, uh, associate selective, selectively, move, position yourself as a learner, manage your emotions and beliefs, check your intuition and then deliberate and then act and there's actually an assessment for each of those areas which by the way dr paul i found awesome and i did that so what i would like to do with your permission is i would kind of like to you know kind of maybe run through as many of these as we can get through before our time is up here uh with your permission and and, and let's see how this goes I, I i may jump and skip over one or two uh maybe we'll just do a definition of what it is but um, I want to start right away with these seven principles because these are so critical when it comes to decision making. And uh, the first one on the list is controlling stimuli. What do you and Dr. Rayo mean when it comes to the first principle is you need to control your stimuli? What do you mean by that? Yeah, uh, what we mean by that is um, one of the most important decisions we all make in our lives is where we put our attention 
right? Where we direct our attention. And if we are, if we're not being more discriminating in terms of what we expose ourselves to, um, we're not going to function optimally in our lives. So controlling stimuli is really, uh, it starts with what's a typical day look like for me? How, you know, what are the measurables? How much time am I spending on my uh, smartphone? Uh, how much time am I spending at a computer terminal? What are some of the other sources of stimuli I- in my life, uh, both positive and negative? You know, we're all exposed to an enormous amount of advertising now, and most people are shocked when they hear the, 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 the numbers in terms of what, how many ads were pitched in the course of, a, of an average day. You know, we, what we say is agency starts with what you allow into your brain. So this whole idea of controlling stimuli is, a, is just about, again, taking a, you know, an assessment, um, an inventory of, of, of how you, you, you tend to live. Do you build in some time for reflection? Do you build in some time for relaxation? Do you build in time to socialize with with good quality people in real time, you know, because what a lot of people don't realize is one of the things that excessive um, digital stimuli, which is one of the cul- the main culprits here, one of the things people don't realize in terms of that is what what it crowds out, what it what it gets in the way of, right? There's an opportunity cost. Economists talk about opportunity cost. There's an opportunity cost of spending, you know, um, six or eight hours a day on a digital device. You know, you're crowding out other things. So that's really what can Control stimuli is. It goes into some detail about all the different sources of stimuli. You know, digital stimuli is only one, but it gets to the point where you know tries to define. You know, what are we up against? I mean, what is this? You know, everybody knows we live in the digital age, or actually the information age, I should say. I mean, the information age is kind of kind of a cliche to even say it now, but we do live in the information age, and this is a whole new thing for us as human beings. We've never been exposed to information as we are today. And the question is, how do what? How do we make use of that in a in a in a positive way in our life versus, you know, exposing ourselves to stimuli that actually, um, you know, impacts us in a neg- in a negative way? So that first principle is all about this 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 is what I've just said. Well, I think it's really interesting because you you give this interesting piece of data that I just found awesome. You said. Uh, the, and, and it's under the title "The Problem: We Are Blind to the Volume of Stimulation We're Surrounded by," which we just talked about. We 34 gigabytes of data and 100,000 words of information reach our eyes and ears each day, and it is increasing. I'm, I'm going to repeat that just in case people missed it. 34 gigabytes of data and 100,000 words of information reach our eyes and ears each day. Seriously, Dr. Paul? That's right. I mean, it's, it's 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 shocking when you actually see the the raw data, um, and then you start to r- recognize you know how that actually affects people on on an individual basis. And one of the one of the things that it does is it crowds out time for reflection. Mm-hmm. And what you know what turns out to be true is for us to be at our best in our lives to to have a healthy sense of agency. Um, we need to have time to reflect, um, some, some, you know, time, some downtime where we actually give thought to, you know, how we're doing and what do we need to, what adjustments do we need to make? What, you know, and to the, the, the title of your, your program, Jay, it's, it's, you know, we're always needing to think, is it time to, to take myself in a new direction? Is it, you know, and if I'm going to do that, I have to have a capacity to reflect on you know, what's going on in my life? Where do I find myself? And so what I think a lot of people are, 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 are slow to realize is that, you know, when, when reflection is crowded out, um, basically, um, you know, what happens is that, you know, people get into a, a, a slow spiral toward, you know, increasing amounts of anxiety and, and, and overwhelm and agent, their agency de- de- declines. So that's, that's the idea. That's why this is an important one. And what I love is that there's more and more being written about this because there's more and more data coming out on how important this is for all, us as humans. And interestingly, um, you know, you got folks in the tech industry in Silicon Valley and, you know, there's been stuff written about this. They're, 
some of the most senior leaders in in the tech industry, they send their their kids to schools that are not tech oriented, where there's yeah. there's there's severe limits on any technology used. They get it. They're at the forefront of this, right? They were early adopters of all this technology, and they figured it out. And so one of the things is our kids are really overwhelmed by this stuff. And, you know, children have, have, have higher processing speeds than, than adults. Um, so it looks like our kids are doing fine, and these things are meant to be very attractive, if not addictive. So, you know, but the question is, how much is too much? So in any case, this whole principle gets into that, and, you know, it's not necessarily a one-size-fits-all, and we're not anti-technology by any stretch, but we're really about, you know, we, what we say is, what you want to do in your life is, is make sure you're using technology and it is not using you because if we're not mindful of it you know it can easily be using us and again if the, if, if if our capacity for independent thought is is in many respects what defines us as human beings it's what it, it's what agency is all about if you're exposing yourself to all this messaging in an unfiltered way and not aware of the fact it's happening how are you going to engage in independent thought Right, it's gonna get in your way, and so that's 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 what it's all about. That's awesome. Uh, we're talking with Dr. Paul Napper. The book is called The Power of Agency: The Seven Principles to Conquer Obstacles, Make Effective Decisions, and Create a Life on Your Own Terms. And uh, we're we're just into the first principle, which is control stimuli. Uh, at the end of every chapter, uh, Paul, you and uh, Tony uh, have an agency toolkit. And as part, which by the way, I just, I loved that. I love the agency toolkit because really it was, you know, kind of a, a, a nice little way to go. Okay, let's, let's synthesize everything. And here's some of your solutions to how you can regain control. Right. And so let's take this first, this first principle of controlling stimuli. And, you know, let's just talk about some ways that people can do that. Are you, are you ready to just talk about a few of these? Um, like remo- yeah, absolutely. Like removing yourself, focus, filter. Yeah. Do you want to talk about those? Yeah, we can definitely talk about some of those those, those just the tips on on how to how to better control stimuli. I mean, I mean, one is you know you can make use of of some of the um, you know some some of the things that are available just in terms of monitoring your use of digital uh, technology. So you, you know you can you know um, Tony for example showed me uh, the last time we 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 met showed me. Uh, you know, a measure of his digital phone usage. And, you know, he, in one week he was up 124%. He said, he said this is not, I'm not going the right direction. Like, this is, this is bad. So, you know, so we have tools available to help us. And what we say is, you know, when it comes to using certain forms of stimuli, digital stimuli in particular, um, because people, you know, grasp this more, it's like, it's, it's like sitting down um, on your couch and you want to have some potato chips, do you bring, you know, an enormous bag of potato chips and just, you know, keep eating and eating mindlessly until you finish the whole bag and, and then even maybe go grab another? Or do you put do you put a bunch of potato chips in, in, a, in a bowl and you eat that amount of potato chips um, and you enjoy that experience and then and then you stop? And so digital technology is the same way. It's it's best when you when you consume digital technology in a in a, in a time limited way, and you know have set, set set some parameters around it. So that that that's one of the things. Um, I think you know I think other other kinds of tips would be things like um, being 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 more aware of some of the the other forms of of stimuli in, in your life um, that. That that, that 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 your brain is needing to make adjustments for because what a lot of people don't realize is is all stimuli is is, is not bad I mean stimuli is, is 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 often you know good healthy stuff but if we are exposed to a lot of noise ambient noise or um, you know things that um, are just highly distracting and irregular I mean that you know, in our environment, that can also be 
um, something that you know you need to you need to think about, um, and because we are sensitive to things like that. So those are just a couple of things. Yeah. Um, or was there anything in particular Jay, no, you like no, from just, the, li- no, the tips? No, I just I just found it to be so awesome. You know, I mean, just things like remove yourself. You know, filter, avoid the junk. You know, lose the phone. You know, take notes by hand. You know, I mean, I would like going. You know, these yeah, are these are pretty it, simple. It, I mean, in general, like you know, I think that is it analog task. You know, there, there's a there, there's there's been stuff written about analog tasks. You know, as humans, we still analog tasks are something to embrace. Anal, an analog task is taking a bike ride, taking a, a, a walk through the neighborhood. Um, it's cooking a meal you know, uh, with somebody else. It's, it's, you know, these are analog tasks that actually can be restorative to us. And so, you know, that's a good, a a, a good thing. I think, you know, this idea too, of I just came from a coaching session with a, with a business leader and, uh, you know, I was encouraging him as a way to control stimuli and also pair it with the move principle, which is principle number three, that, you know, get out of the office, get out of your, you know, your, your, your office and, and take a a, a 20 to 30 minute walk outside. You know, that's a way of controlling stimuli. It's also a way of movement of moving um, that, you know, controlling stimuli and movement actually go well together right. as two principles because a lot of times when you're in motion, um, you know, you're not on a digital device. And so one of the problems with digital devices is, as we all know, we tend to be on them when we're, we're stationary. So, you know, being uh, immobile for hours at a time in front of a screen of any sort um, you know, is not good for your health. It's like, it's like eating two enormous bags of potato chips. And, you know, and yet, you know, we're not, you know, we all are kind of aware at this point that, you know, eating two large bags of potato chips in one setting is probably not the best idea, (laughs) but, you know, um, not to pick on potato chips, but, um, you know, I think when it comes to digital devices, we're still, we're still, we're still adjusting to this new world. And these things were designed to be very um, appealing, and they are. I mean, people are, you know, people sleep with their phones, and, um, you know, the, some of the stories about people's, um, you know, the relationship they have, and we even have some, some, some anecdotes in the book about, you know, people's relationships with their phones, very personal, very, you know, people feel like it's, the phone is part of them. So, um, you know, the junk, the piece of, you know, um, you know, the, the tip that you cited, Jay, about junk, you know, is, you know, be a, we're aware of what junk food is, right? right. Super high calorie, non-nutritious right. food. Um, and if we eat too much of it, you know, we're not only going to gain weight, we're not going to feel good. And it's ultimately going to affect, you know, our, 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 our thinking and our emotions. The same is true of information. I mean, there's a lot of junk information. So we talk also about how do you ensure that you're, 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 you're exposing yourself to high quality information that's additive in your life, not that somebody just wants to reach you to try to influence you, to try to, to try to, you know, get you to buy something, um, you know, that if you're exposed to too much of the, that junk information or worse information that's actually inaccurate, you know, information that's right designed to manipulate you. And, you know, we, with the rise of this kind of technology, as we all know, and we live in an environment today where, you know, um, there's more and more uh, information being directed our way that actually tries to manipulate us, right? Tries to right. Ma- manipulate us through our emotions, our beliefs. And, you know, we can sometimes be slow to recognize that. So we all have to be a lot more, apply a filter and be a, a, a more discriminating in what we expose ourselves to. Because again, like the equivalent to junk food, we expose ourselves to junk information, you know, it's garbage in, garbage out, right? right. That old expression. And, you know, you put garbage into your body and no, nothing positive is going to come out. So so anyway, so that's, that's kind of the, 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 the skinny, the down low on, uh, uh, on control stimuli. Well, and and by the way, we're talking with Dr. Paul Knapper, his uh, co-author of the book, The Power of Agency, The Seven Principles to Conquer Obstacles, Make Effective Decisions, and Create a Life on Your Own Terms, available uh, Amazon, of course, bookstores everywhere, and it's available in every format that you can think of. I don't think you can think of a format that it's not available on. It's really that available. And uh, you need, it's a it's a very powerful book. I'm just telling you right now, I, I've, I've read the entire book. I've I told him I've taken 18 pages of notes 
on this book, um, and I've, I've got him at a disadvantage because I'm, I'm, I get to look at my notes as I'm doing the show, and he doesn't get to see what I'm looking at. <laughs> so I've got him a little bit, but you know what? I, I, I love the book, and it was really a great book, and I found it to be helpful for me as well. And we're, we're just starting on the seven principles, and one of the things that you do, Dr. Paul, and you and, and Tony do in this is that the first three principles, which are control stimuli, associate select, associate selectively, and move, those are the behavioral uh, three, and you break them up into the behavioral and the cognitive, which will be the last four. And I, I, I wanted, I know, I, I want to just kind of give a brief, quick thing uh, on select, associate selectively. Uh, you say you need to spend time with empathetic, optimistic, open-minded people, and weeding out those who have the opposite qualities will boost your mood, elevate your motivation, and improve your health. Just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of the more important of, of the seven principles in the sense of, as human beings, we're social creatures, and we, you know, we we are embedded in 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 relationships with other people, and if we're not around people who support us, who also people we can learn from, um, people help us help us grow and develop. Um, you know, our our level of agency will will will, will de- deteriorate. So, this whole idea of selectively associate is is this idea of pay attention to the people in your in your close inner circle, um, and then and also you know out, out outside of that in the next ring outside of that circle, and then in the ring outside of that circle, and ask yourself, you know, do do I like the people I'm around? Are they helpful to me? Are they are they encouraging to me? And uh, so you know, and so the goal is not when somebody in your inner circle is difficult or challenging to you know, um, cast them aside and move on. There's ways to work on those relationships, which we talk about Mm -hmm. ways to challenge other people in our lives in healthy ways to, um, give you what you need. Um, and if, 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 if through trial and error, if it doesn't work out the last, the course of last resort is to, you know, to actually move away from that person, decrease the amount of time you spend with that person, um, or, or, you know, sever the relationship in extreme cases. But we, it's very important to our sense of overall health, well-being, and, and yes, agency when we are around people both in our close inner circle and also in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in the states we live in, if we're if we're around people who who drag us down or worst case scenario who who are abusive, our level of agency deteriorates. And one of the classic examples of this is, you know, um, you know, people the whole thing on battered wife syndrome, right? When you know, I think a lot of times people don't understand what happens to a woman if she's in a relationship where. Um, She's abused by her spouse for, you know, years at a time. Well, her her level of agency slowly is eroded. And I think what a lot of people say is, why didn't she just leave him? You know, well, the problem is, is that, you know, when you stick with people, and that's, again, an extreme example, but it's a it's a it's it's a it's a useful analogy because what happens is a person's level of agency is eroded through being in a in an abusive relationship over time to a point where a person just becomes you know feels powerless to do anything and so what we talk about in this principle is you know is avoiding any kind of relationships like that and instead you know finding people building new relationships with people who actually bring something healthy and useful into your life that's awesome his name is dr paul knapper and he is joining us here on a new direction you know a new direction is very selective about who we associate with right so one of our new sponsors was handpicked literally because well, I've been there, and I believe in them, and they believed in the show, and their name is Epic Physical Therapy, and their facility is probably one of the most advanced, top-of-the-line facilities that you'll see when it comes to physical therapy. They work with professional athletes. They work with they work with anybody, actually, and the truth is, it matters. Even if it's something about nutrition, and you just want to be in better shape, and you're just not sure how, they can work with you as well. They have some of the most advanced equipment, and one is called the Alter-G, the anti-gravity treadmill, the Norma Tech compression sleeves, if you've ever seen that. 
that and and the game ready, which I've had to use when I've had knee surgeries, by the way, and it's awesome. It gets it really cold. Those are just a few of the things. They are trained and certified in the most comprehensive cutting edge treatments available, including blood flow restriction therapy, dry needling, and cupping. That's just to name a few. Look, you can learn how they can make your life more epic epic by going to epicpt.com. Just go to epicpt, that's E-P-I-C-P-T.com, and Linda Craft and Team Realtors. You know what? They're located in Raleigh, North Carolina, but they can help people all over the world. That's because for 35 years, they have built this network of the best agents around the world, literally, that can help you sell your home or buy your home regardless of where you're at. But should you be in that research triangle park area where Linda Craft is located, right? That's that Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area. You can walk right into their office on 7300 Forks Road. And guess what they'll do? They're going to hand you a bottle of water. <laughs> they're going to say welcome. And you can ask them any questions about real estate that you would like. And they're happy to serve you right there. Why do I say serve? Because it's been a part of the culture for 35 years that they are the legends of customer service. Absolutely, period. And so if you want to learn why and how they became a legend, why not go to lindacraft.com. That's L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T.com. We thank them for sponsoring A New Direction. And we're here with Dr. Paul Knapper, author, co-author of the book, The Power of Agency, The Seven Principles to Conquer Obstacles, Make Effective Decisions, and Create a Life on Your Own Terms. And uh, Dr. Paul, I, I, you know, I'm like going, man, this time is flying so fast. I'm never going to make it through this book. And and I, it's crushing me, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go on anyway. And I'm actually going to jump ahead a little bit if you're okay with that. Um, we, you Absolutely. Know, yeah. I mean, we've talked a little bit about move and the importance of movement, the importance of movement because... You know, I think one of the things that we're such a more sedentary uh, society that we're not getting up to move, and yet, you know, it's really important. We need to get up <laughs> and move, and, and you make a you and, and, and Dr. Rayo make a great uh, point about that. I want to talk to you, though, first, before I get into the next piece, is in the cognitive, the first cognitive principle, because positioning yourself as a learner which, by the way, I you know I read a book a week for this show, and so I read and and so I love to learn. It's and I had to figure out how am I going to do a job, you know, that I can do in my life where I can learn, right? And and so I get to that's, do. That's great. That's you definitely you definitely utilize this principle, Jay. That's that is positioning yourself to learn for sure. Right, and I and I love doing it, and and I love doing it, and then of course I coach you know, clients as well. And so I can take, like, I'm, I'm going to be really honest with you, um, Paul. I am going to take principles from your book and I'm probably going to apply it to my coaching clients. Sorry, I'm just, it's stealing. I'm stealing some of your stuff. It's great. I hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just going to be really honest with you. I'm going to do it with my coaching clients because it's that good. Absolutely. So let's talk about positioning yourself as a learner. What do we mean by that? And how do we help people get there to maybe, if maybe they say, well, I'm not really a great learner. How do we help them? Yeah, great question. Position yourself as a learner is one of the best ways to boost your level of agency. And so it's it's really the whole idea here is if you learn new things, you know, each and every day throughout your life and, and, and make that, a you know, part of each day to learn something, um, you know, it pays off. And there are many different ways to learn. So, you know, it's not just about reading books. It's not just about going to school. Uh, we talk in this in this principle about the different modes of learning that are out there. There are many different ways that we as human beings learn. And for each of us, we typically have one mode, one or two modes of learning that work best for us that we prefer. You know, in your case, Jay, you know, you you love to read and you you read a book a week that probably puts you in the 99th percentile of Americans (laughs) who read, um, you know, in terms of volume of reading. So, you know, that obviously works for you. But not everybody is a reader not everybody is is academically oriented and likes taking classes but there's there's other ways to learn and um, so we talk about the importance to agency of simply learning new things and all the different ways you can learn in your in your life and so you know I mean sometimes it's as simple as just uh, it, it, it can be a physical thing. You take on a new new hobby. I mean, I, a few years back, I decided I'd been a long time skier. I decided I wanted to snowboard, and um, set about you know learning how to snowboard. And um, that was a very simple thing. But you know, 
it, that's learning, right? right? That is, and, and, and a lot of people wouldn't think of that as learning, but it can be as simple as a hobby, is, is taking on some new thing where you challenge yourself, you challenge your brain to, uh, to, to function on new terrain. So, so anyway, so this is important, position self as a learner, because it, it contributes to our overall health and well-being, and it gives us more personal power in our life. So it's, 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 that's why it's really connected to our level of agency. I, 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 I guess, you know, I, I would be, of course, you know, want, want to talk about the love, the learning piece of it, because I just, I, I, it's, it's, I just love it. I just really do. I just, there's just, I feel like if my body can shut down, my brain can keep going. Right. And I just feel like, okay, maybe I can't physically do the things that I could do when I was 25 years old, but man, my brain can still learn and I can still grow and I could still I, I could still think and I can still, you know, absorb more things. And I think that's what excites me so much when it comes to learning, that it's the one area of my life that regardless of how I age, that it's an area that I can always keep growing in, that, that I can always get better at. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's very, very true. And I think the whole idea of we call it position yourself as a learner, it's to do that in an active way, right? It's not like just that you happen to learn by accident, you know, because you stumble into something, but actually you position yourself to learn. So one really basic way to do that, uh, that you don't, you know, you don't need much uh, skill to do necessarily, is simply ask questions to other people, you know, so, you know, what do you think about this? How did you arrive at that, you know, that mm. perspective? Um, you know, how do you do this or how do you do that? You know, so, I mean, we can learn from, from other people, um, particularly people who have skills we don't have. So one of the most, most simple ways to position yourself as a learner is just, you know, again, it plays a little bit on associate selectively. Mm. Have people in your life who know more than you do. Right or certainly have some knowledge on topics you don't know much right. about, right. and and learn from them. Right, ask right. them questions. You know, you, you know, when in doubt, formulate a question, and um, you know. So that's uh, it's an important it's an important one, and it's something that that each and every one of us can 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 practice in in our lives. There's all kinds of ways to learn. That's awesome. Uh, we're talking with Dr. Paul Napper. The book's called The Power of Agency. Uh, the seven principles to conquer obstacles, make effective decisions, create a life on your own terms, and um, uh, we're, we're we're having a great time. This book, if you you got to get this book, it's just it's I I am not gonna t- I know I'm pushing you I know I, I and he tells me not to do that right he says okay look okay you don't have to do it but I'm really highly encouraging you to do it okay as your friend here buy the book all right. And then if they don't have it at the bookstore, you tell them, get it in now. Take agency, okay? <laughs> Take control of your life. There it is. Tell them what you want <laughs> because this book is that good. It's going to be helpful. So I'm going to, Dr. Paul, I'm going to skip ahead to number seven because I think number seven encompasses uh, all of these things and more. And that is uh, all this, the previous six principles. And that is deliberate, then act. What do we mean when we say deliberate and then act, and and what do we need to do? Yeah, this this is the, the final um, principle of agency, which relates to our capacity to engage in deeper uh, reflective thought, right? To to make logical decisions, you know, which we all need to do on on more important areas in, in our lives. So. Um, this is based on science, it's based on research, in terms of how our brains work and how we actually make decisions in our lives. It's, it's interesting to me that, um, in general, you know, decisions are so important because they define us as human beings. I mean, we say in the book, as, as you've seen, Jay, is, you know, we are the sum total of all the decisions we make over the course of our lives, you know, large and small. And getting the big ones right is really important. And yet, you know, we don't really teach explicitly, you know, hum- decision making to humans. I mean, there's some there's some stuff out there on critical thinking, which is very valuable. And critical thinking, by the way, has become one of the the primary skills of the 21st century, the capacity to, to think critically 
and it's a learned skill. And so, you know, one of the things we, we, we recommend as part of this seventh principle is learn something about critical thinking. You know, take a class on it, read a book on it, talk to somebody who's good at it. But this whole idea of deliberate then act is this idea of deliberating before you act. Think more deeply about a situation. Try to use logical, your logical reasoning skills. And um, we... In writing this chapter, we interviewed a range of high-powered, successful decision makers. So we we interviewed some uh, physicians, a judge, um, a, uh, a, pol- a leader in the police department who basically is the head of analysis for the whole Boston Police Department, um, a business person, and you know several others. And we talked about the how they make important decisions in the course of their work. And um, as a way to help other people see, you know, how, how people that, that, that who's, who often make life and death decisions, um, you know, each and every day, how they try to ensure that they make good quality decisions. So, so this principle really brings it all together because when, when the other six principles are sort of, you know, in place as a, as a foundation, we actually become better at logical reasoning. So, um, so, so, so this is sort of the final um, critical sort of uh, principle where we put it all into into play, and we make decisions, important life decisions for ourselves, um, that hopefully you know take us in the desired direction, right? That that help us to build a life that's right for us. It's you know not 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 a life that's for you know for someone else, but actually the life that you want to create. So um, so anyway, so that's the final the final agency principle. I know we're running out of time, but I, I you know I, I hope that um, I hope that, that that that's really clear. We 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 did this principle, this final principle, based on the work literally decades of research done by Daniel Kahneman um, and Amos Tversky, two, two famous psychologists who did, just did an enormous number of experiments on how we as humans actually use our brains to make decisions. So it kind of tries to simplify that and um, bring it down to a, a very practical level so people can make use of that important research. Yeah, I, we, we are we are running out of time, and you've been so gracious with because you know we never did get into metacognition and how to practice metacognition, which by the way, <clears throat> is you know basically you know thinking about thinking, <laughs> right? It's stepping outside of yourself. Exactly, right. thinking about your thinking. Yeah. What is you know challenging it? You know, what's the quality of my thinking? Right. Do I? And how many of us? You know, what's interesting is one of the people we met with is a physician in the Harvard system, and you know he said you know he, he interviewed a whole bunch of physicians, top-notch physicians, and he said. You know, describe your thinking process to me. How, how do you how do you reason through things to make a, a, a diagnosis? And a lot of top-notch physicians struggled with that. So, the, the 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 bottom line here is we all do better if we have an ability to ask ourselves, you know, uh, that question. How did I make decisions? You know, how how did I reason through that? You know, how, you know, when I think about my thinking, what did I come up with? You know, where did I go wrong or where did I go right? So. Um, so in any case, that, um, yeah, that, this is one of the more important ones, obviously. Yeah, you, you say on page 277, um, you know, that effective deliberating is crucial when trying to do anything of importance. And I thought that was, that really defined this, to me, that defined the end of this chapter. And uh, I really appreciated you saying that. And uh, I really appreciate you uh, being on the show. We're, we're running out of time. But I... Uh, I do this to every guest. Uh, you're now a friend of the show. You're now a friend of mine. And so I ask all my friends at the end of the show, the show is called A New Direction. We try to help people find a new direction in their life or their career or their business or in all three. So if Dr. Paul Knapper, co-author of the book, The Power of Agency, could leave the listeners with a new direction, what would he say? Give some thought to where you find yourself in your life and what you want to create for yourself and then give thought to, you know, how you're feeling about your ability to, to, to generate that, to create that. And, um, 
and and that will give you a sense, an overall sense of, of of how you're feeling in terms of your level of agency. The primary goal for us as, as humans is to be able to form good quality uh, decisions and to feel confident in taking action on those decisions. And so if you're feeling like you're struggling to make important life decisions, if you also feel like you um, don't have confidence in, 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 in your ability to do that, um, you know, that means you need to shore up your agency. And you start with some of these foundational principles, um, building on the, some of those foundational principles, and that will help you get yourself back on track. His name is Dr. Paul Knapper. The book is entitled, entitled The Power of Agency, The Seven Principles to Conquer Obstacles, Make Effective Decisions, and Create a Life on Your Own Terms. It's outstanding. Uh, available at Amazon bookstores everywhere uh, in every different format. Uh, folks, this is the show. You know what I say every week, be inspired, because when you're inspired, that means you can inspire someone else, and in turn, that means they get an opportunity to inspire others. You know, I'm going to be one last thing yeah. Jay, I'd like to say is if people want more information, yeah. they can go to powerofagency.com and learn more about the book and take a small subtest. So sorry to butt in there, but no. that, that's another thing I forgot to say. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. Because you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put that link on the write up, the blog write up, because there's a blog write up associated with the show. So, uh, people will be able to, uh, get in contact uh, with the, a way to purchase the book, but they'll also be able to go right to the website, The Power of Agency. I will also have Dr. Paul's website up there as well so that you can find out, learn more about him and also Dr. Anthony Rayo's site as well so that you can learn more about both of them individually and collectively and The Power of Agency. So yes, I will do that. Uh, but I also want to say, look, uh, this is the show. Next week, I'm going to be back with another awesome guest, um, they got a lot of work to do because Dr. Paul was pretty darn awesome. <laughs> so they're going to have a lot of work to do next week, but it's going to be great. So as I say every week, you know what it is. Ciao, everybody. your confidence and the answers don't make sense you got to keep your hope alive you got to know you can survive this is your time to find a new direction a brand new day a new direction things are gonna change Dreams will take you places you have never been before Find your passion, find your strength